Okay. I think this is part five. Black oil paint. Dad, please, I want to use it to check the ink. My fever refused to go down, and after Dad brought me a glass of water, I sat up and clasped my hands together to start begging. I wrote mirror letters on a block of wood large enough to grip and asked him to carve the letters out to turn into a stamp. Sheesh. When I'm done, I'm not going to show it to you until your fever's down. Two days passed since I asked Dad to see the carved out block. My fever finally went down, and the debut of the century began with my family arguing that I needed to stay home for a bit before going to the workshop. And let's arguing that making ink would get me so excited I could fit a fever the next time I went to the workshop no matter what. Um, I think that- be quiet, mine. We know you want to go already. Everyone agreed with Tuli and I was denied in participation in a debate that was about me. Bored, I fished through the storage room and took out a thin wooden board. I stayed in the corner of the kitchen while everyone was arguing and wrapped a cloth around it, then wrapped a layer of bamboo around it so it wouldn't hurt the paper. <laughs> I made a barren. Kinda. It will definitely be important for the woodcuts. The debate ended by the time I finished my barren, with the ultimate decision being that I would stay at home today but go to the temple again starting the next day. A day of waiting built up my type. With some old clothes, I wouldn't mind throwing out away. Soap and the stamp Dad made for me, I was ready to go. Are you as excited as I am, Lutz? Yeah, so how do you make this stuff anyway? You're going to have to explain since you don't get to help. He was kind of hiding it, but Lutz did look excited to be making something new again. I couldn't pick, participate in the making myself since I was forbidden from working in the workshop as a blue shrine maiden, which meant I had to tell Lutz exactly what to do. When adding the paint, add small amounts bit by bit. Things will mix together better that way. But to start with, you have to put them so on top of the marble slab. Then you dig in little holes with your fingers, pour the linseed oil into the holes, and mix it up with the scraper. We don't want too much oil, so if you think you need more, add only one drop at a time. Once you've mixed it up with a scraper, go to town with the pestle. I explain what to do while showing my, using my hands to show how much soot and oil to add. Let's fell silent, thinking for a few moments. How hard do you mean when you say go to town, he asked. I'm not sure. It depends on the pigment. When I made this in the past, it took about 20 min um, about as long as it takes to get a pot of water to get boiling, but someone using an another pigment might not finish by the time the water's boiling. You have to keep mashing it all until it gets silky. The mashing was exhausting and took a lot of grit and endurance. When I explained in cooking terms, Lutz opened his wide and eyes wide in surprise. You managed to make something like that? You, mine? Back when I then, I was a peppy girl, okay? Everyone always said I was full of energy as long as I got to read books. I even got perfect attendance in my school's library. Like, life sure comes at you fast. I gave a big nod. It was hard not to complain that if not for this body, things would have been a lot easier for me. There would be so much more that I could do. All right, I'm going off to the workshop. Come on over whenever you're ready. Once we reached the gate, Les handed me off to Fran and sped speed walk to the workshop. I was going to my chambers to greet my servants before going to the workshop since I had been bedridden for so long. And now that I'm better, I believe I shall go to the workshop. Your hard skill practice comes first, sister mine. I wanted to get started making ink right away, but Rosina stopped me with a smile. An ambush had been set in the place I at least expected. Daily practice is vital for learning as an instrument, but you have already missed practice five days in a row. You will need to practice more than twice as long today to minimize the damage. I believe five times as long will suffice, given that you missed five days. Rosina's blue eyes were sparkling with excitement at the prospect of practicing five times as long. She was serious, too. She seriously intended to make me practice five times as long just as I could read books all day without feeling bored at all. Rosina could thrive anywhere as long as she had music. The longer the practice, the happier she was. I instantly shook my head as hard as I could. No, thank you. I request a standard study session. I will take it quite seriously, I assure you. Rosina smiled and held out my instrument with a bright, very well. I took it from her and got into playing position. But when I tried playing the first practice song I had been given, I discovered that she was right. My skill had plummeted while I was sick, and I couldn't play the song well anymore. That didn't help bode well for learning to play the second song. With cold sweat running down my back, I practiced hard until third bell rang. That was an impressive degree of focus. Rosina smiled warmly and praised me after third bell rang. Getting a compliment from a beautiful girl never felt bad. Time to go to the workshop, okay? I thought with brimming happiness, only for Fran to stop in my, stand in my way. The high priest's administrative paperwork has piled up due to your extended absence, and he has grown worried upon learning of your sickness. Let us go to his office. Fran had no intention of budging either. The high priest probably did get right after I spent so many days sick at home. But I wanted to go to the workshop. I wanted to skip helping the high priest so I could get started on making ink already. Oh, Fran. When afternoon comes, I will have no complaints. I will accompany you to the workshop. Sister mine, at times like these, you must continue to smile without showing any emotion. And please remember that there will be many times in life where you're forced to do things you dislike. 
Unable to argue with Rosina, who had been given a stack of financial boards to work her way through before lunch, I hung my head sadly. How could I smile at a time like this? I thought tearfully as I forced a twitchy smile on my face. You are right, Rosina, I understand. Off to the high priest room we go. I headed to the high priest room with slumped shoulders. I didn't dislike helping him with his paperwork or anything, but the fact that I had something a lot more fun waiting for me really put a damper on my spirits. Ah, I see I finally recovered. Come here, mine. The second he saw me, the high priest handed me the sound blocking magic tool. I gripped it so we could talk. It seemed that all the great priests in the orphanage cleaned the chimneys and fireplaces far earlier than expected this year. What are you plotting? Please do watch your phrasing, honorable high priest. I have no plots, only a desire to make ink that will work well on plant paper. The great priest scattered the said I needed for it and did nothing more. I explained what happened and the high priest rubbed his forehead. I see, I understand now, that you needed it to do for your workshop. But take care not to overstep your bounds and anger the high bishop. I hadn't seen him in so long I had actually forgotten about him. But yeah, the high bishop was a person who existed, and he sucked. Was I the only one who thought I would anger the high bishop no matter what I did? Probably. After Actually, no, you probably would anger him no matter what you did. Because just by you existing at the temple is enough to make him mad. Especially after you crushed him with your mana. After helping the high priest in finishing lunch, I could finally go to the workshop. Lutz predicted that I would be held up all morning and had been directing the paper making in the meantime. There's a lot of stuff you need to do that built up over the past five days, yeah? Some good daily routine is just what you need to cool your head, mine. Well, my head sure has cooled off now. The three things I needed were lined up at the workshop and split into groups. The soot everyone gathered, the linseed oil that Benna bought, and the lime that Lutz bought. I've heard that you all work together to gather soot for me. I graciously appreciate that. Today, I would like to make ink. This is labor that requires significant strength, so only adult gray priests will be participating. Everyone else may continue making paper as usual. After thanking everyone and splitting up the workforce, it was time to make ink. Now then, let's please begin. Let's was my biggest helper here. It seemed that he had memorized everything I explained to him just fine, as he put the soot in the marble slab and dug holes for the oil without any issue. Once the oil was in, he used the scraper to flatten and mix it all thoroughly. I still remember the time I made oil paint in the past, so I was confident this paint part would go well. But I hadn't sought out particularly high quality oil, or oil, so it was very possible that the paint would turn out poorly regardless of technique. The mixing seems to be going well. I believe now is the time to switch to the pestle. Let's start it off with a small amount since paint ends up better if mixed bit by bit, and that seemed to be going well. Once it was all mixed together, he switched out for a pestle and began grinding, grind, grind, grinding it. He kept on crushing and grinding the mixture without pause. Sweat formed on his brow and he put all his might into his arms as he crushed the mixture into paint that would serve as ink. His face going bright red in the process. I couldn't help him since I was a blue shrine man, and even if I tried, I would just get in his way. Grinding the paint mixture took far more strength than I had right now. I had summoned a gray priest to stand at the ready since I predicted it would be too hard for a kid to do, but let's finish it without a single complaint. That has a suitable amount of silkiness and stickiness. I quickly took out the stamp Dad made and pressed it hard against the freshly made paint a few times before pressing it against some ripped ballroom paper. The letters spelling MINE appeared on it, and an audible stir went through those watching. She really did make ink, to think it needed only soot and oil. The gray priests, having seen something new be created for the first time in their lives, looked at the oil paint with wide eyes. It seemed that they hadn't entirely believed that soot and oil would actually make anything. Paint workshops probably made their paint with a simpler, similar method, but the priests never had any opportunity to see it. It was possible that their paint making methods were also trade secrets. Uh oh. You probably didn't think about that, mine. Everyone else, please gradually make the oil paint as he did. Put the finished ink here. Fran got the container for the oil paint and let's put his ink inside it. Although it was a bit confusing, paint or really any substance used for printing could be called ink. Pl let's please wash your hands with this snap and get some rest. Or soap and get a little bit of and this soap and get some rest. A gray priest began making ink in Lutz's place, and two others brought in different tools and joined him, adding bits of oil to the soot and starting to mix. While they were hard at work doing that, I took the finished oil paint and tried using the pointed tip of a shade fit of wood to write letters on paper and draw lines on a board. It was too sticky and thick to be a, repl a replacement for normal ink, but it seemed like it would work just fine for the wood blocks. The main thing was that I would need a roller, like I used in our class, to spread the ink evenly since the thickness would be very, very too much without it. Getting a clean wood block print would be a bit difficult without a roller or at least a paintbrush. How's the ink, mine? Lutz came back after washing his hands and face, but his fingertips were still a bit black. We could need, we'd need a stronger soap. It works more or less. Now I want ink in other colors. Other colors? You can make it colored? Lutz's eyes widened. I told him it was making this, made the same way, just with a different pigment. Making ink in other colors wouldn't be, poss wouldn't be impossible. I just wasn't sure where or how I would get this other pigments. 
What other pigment is there than soot? As far as I know, most pigments are made from pulverizing minerals, or in more simple terms, if you take colored rocks and break them into fine powder, you can make paint out of it with oil just like you did with the soot. Iron oxide and loess, lo a combination of clay, sand, and wind-blown silt, sometimes called yellow clay, were historically used as pigments. Blue colors made from lapis lazuli and azurite were fairly prevalent, as were reds made from rouge and cinnabar. But I had no idea if I could look at the minerals here and tell which were which. Uh, mine, does that mean someone's got to hit the rocks until they're all powder? Asked S. Lutz timidly, afraid of having to do that himself. I shook my head. Naturally, I had no intention of making Lutz break his back pounding rocks to bits. That was too much for a kid. Surely someone's job is to do that. I asked Mom about the pigment, or her dyeing workshop, who told me more people asking for pigments would increase the cost of dyes. According to Mom, some conflict broke out in the past where the number of art workshops increased. And the materials for dyes got more expensive in turn. She asked me not to do anything that would cause problems like that since she would lose her job. Naturally, I couldn't do anything that would hurt my mom like that. Directly mining the minerals seemed like a big leap, but I could imagine that buying the pig pigments wouldn't be, would be too expensive. Especially problematic was that I didn't even know where one could mine the materials that would make pigments. How could I when I have only ever left the city to go to a nearby forest? I guess yellow clay would be the simplest thing to get if I just knew where to find it. We'd have to pound it into a powder, but yellow clay is usually powder already. But like I said, who's going to do that? It was written on Lutz's face that he had no intention of doing it himself. I didn't have the tools or manpower to break up rocks, so giving up on this idea seemed wise for now. If we go to a mineral store like a lumber store, they might have tiny chunks of rocks for sale. Too bad pulverizing them would be so hard. Maybe we should try asking an art workshop about how they make their paint? Master Vandal said they wouldn't talk about their paint, just the tools. More trade secrets. Figures. The three great priests finished their oil paint as Lutz and I talked. They finished faster than Lutz since they had the strength of adults. I couldn't help but smile as I saw the porcelain container fill up with paint. The stamp worked and colored ink can come later, which means it's time to make the picture books using woodcuts. Let's stop with the ink for today. Making it takes a lot of work. My arms feel heavy as heck. Okay, about the paper then. Could you make some thicker paper for the picture books? Like, kinda a lot of it? Sure, you get some rest while you think about the picture books, alright? With the oil paint basically complete, I wanted to move straight to making the picture books. I walked around the workshop to encourage the kids swish swishing water and making paper, then returned to my workshop. I returned to my room, I'm sorry. I headed from my desk and immediately began writing an adap adaptation of the Bible for kids on the paper Benno gave me. The stories didn't need to be that detailed for the picture book, and I tried to keep my vocabulary as simple as possible. Once done, I read over my work. Everything seemed fine. All I had to do was ask the high priest if I could make it into a picture book. Oh, right. I need to talk to Wilma about drawing the art. Rosina, would you come to the orphanage with me? I need to talk to Wilma about something. Wilma, uncomfortable around men as she was, would no doubt prefer for me to go with Rosina rather than Fran. Rosina was in the middle of glaring at boards while receiving work instructions from Fran, and the moment I called out to her, her expression beamed into a smile. She must really hate math. Fran, I must go. Sister mine needs me. Rosina started putting away her things. Fran nodded at her and handed over several boards. Please deliver these to Wilma while you're at, or while you're there. He seems to struggle with math as well, but she will need to learn if she is to watch over the girls' building. Rosina blinked after being given both the boards she had been working on and boards related to the girls' building, but ultimately smiled without missing a beat. That's Rosina for you. She didn't show her surprise for a second. I went to the orphanage with Rosina, who was carrying the boards, paper, and some ink. Wilma seemed to be cleaning and making soap while the kids were working in the orphanage. She really was the orphanage's mother. Wilma greeted us with a warm smile, and I ended up smiling as well. My life truly was enriched by having two beautiful girls as an attendance. I took a seat in the dining hall and explained my business as Rosina and Wilma followed from behind. As discussed earlier, I would like you to draw art for a Bible picture book. I've also brought with me paperwork from Fran. It seems he would like you to go through these, given that you are overseeing the girls' building. Wilma paled slightly at the pile of boards, and probably not because she was considering how, why it was called paperwork when no paper was involved. Rosina in the past had been consoled by Wilma that all attendants had to overcome their weaknesses, and now it was her turn to console Wilma with a smile of assurance. Attendants must do work of this form, and although it may be painful now, you will grow accustomed to it over time as a matter of necessity. Practice is important in both math and art. Isn't that right, sister mine? It is. The more you practice, the faster you'll get, and the fewer errors you'll make. Join us in overcoming our flaws, Wilma. Unable to argue, Wilma hung her head sadly and took the boards I had her and Rosina. I had her and Rosina read my simplified adaptation of the Bible so they could point out anything I shouldn't have cut out or stuff like that. 
One was suggested that I use all the words on the cards so that the kids could learn to read faster or learn a bit easier, and with great difficulty, I managed to make that work. In the meantime, Wilma sketched illustrations on boards that were about half the size of an A5 piece of paper. That art would be carved into wood to make a world cut later. I thank you ever so much, Wilma. I will have these carved to make the picture books. Once they are finished, perhaps we can write a, con a continuation. Yes, I would like that. I excitedly returned to my chambers with the boards Wilma drew on, only to find Lutz waiting for me with a furious expression. Mine, didn't I tell you to rest in your room? What? Didn't you tell me to think about the picture book story? No. It seemed I had misheard him a little. And so Lutz got furious at me for not resting in my room quietly. Of course. Uh, it's 16 minutes. Okay. Making picture books with the wood, with blo wood block printing. I cannot talk right. I added the text on my picture board to the woodcut art Wilma drew, but writing mirrored for printing purposes. Or written, mirror, written mirrored for printing purposes. Let's would take the woodcut home to have the art and design carved out. The art was pretty detailed, which made me worried, but let's just shrug and said that Ralph and Sig would make sure it got done. While Lutz and his brothers were carving the woodcut, I requested a meeting with the high priest to show him my simplified Bible text and get permission to use it in a religious picture book. Although I had only simplified it as much as necessary for kids to understand, I imagined that getting pre permission to modify the Bible and make picture books out of it would be wise. He took me to his secret room to talk, as he always did when he wanted to hear the precise details of whatever new thing I was inventing. I thought that just using the sound blocking magic tool would be enough, but he said he couldn't be sure if what I was bringing should be shown to others until he heard about it alone first. A Bible for children, hmm? That could be useful for teaching them letters and grammar. I am making them into picture books, and I plan to teach the orphans to read with them as well. The orphans? For what purpose? To be honest, it didn't have a particularly noble reason. I just wanted to increase literacy around the world, starting with those around me. They'll have to learn to read eventually if they want to be attendants, and I wouldn't want the employees of the Mind Workshop to be unable to read the books it will soon be creating. I see. So you speak from the perspective of a merchant. The high priest looked over my modified Bible text and murmured that it was good enough. He then looked at me, his light gold eyes narrowed sharply. Mine? Where exactly were you educated? What training have you received? His question was so out of the blue that the smile on my face twit vanished and I stiffened up. My heart began to pound and my blood raced through me while with sickening speed. I do not quite understand what you mean. I really didn't understand. Where in the world had his question come from? The high priest, keeping his eyes locked onto me so as to observe my reaction, smacked a finger against the paper I had given him. This text is far too well constructed. It is no easy feat to isolate the key points of the Bible, as wordy and difficult to read as it is, and simplify it all into something easy for kids to understand. You can barely recognize any words of the Bible when I first read it to you. Written th writing this should be far beyond your abilities. Fear stirred in my heart. Now that I thought about it, I had never shown the high priest anything I had written all on my own before. I just did the repetitive math when helping him with his paperwork, and all letters to him were written in Fran's instructions. The story I had given him must have stuck out, given that I needed Fran's help to write letters and had only a weak grasp on a lot of vocabulary despite learning to read to be a merchant. Are you saying I did a good job? Yes, extremely. Such a good job I might believe that you are a foreigner who received strict education in another language and simply did not know the language of this country. He looked, he, that is exactly what it is! That is exactly what it is! Just not a foreign land, a foreign world! He looked at me with the guarded look he might give a spy. I tightened my lips. Was the high priest incre incredible for having derived that much from a single story? Or was I just too stupid to have realized how abnormal my writing skills were from my supposed age? Probably both. I let out a slow sigh while my mind raced to think of an answer. I'm like Lutz, I couldn't trust the high priest enough to tell him everything. He seemed to think a bit differently from the other blue priests here, but that was because he thought and acted from the perspective of a noble rather than the perspective of a priest. I couldn't even imagine what someone with significant political power would do with someone like me. High Priest, I was born and raised in the city. I have never left except to go gathering in the woods. This is the first time I've ever even heard that other countries exist. Mine really hadn't left this town. In her youth, it was rare for her to even leave her house. It was obvious that she never had any opportunity to be educated, but my reassurance did not satisfy the High Priest's doubts, and he continued to eye me. The investigation I conducted certainly unearthed nothing suspicious, and yet it seemed, simply does not make sense. Yeah, it doesn't. My relationship with the high priest had been fairly positive up until now. If he were to grow suspicious of me, I would have no blue, no blue robed allies within the temple. It was thanks only to the high priest's influence that I could exist here without encountering other blue priests. 
If he turned against me now, I would have no safety net while I still didn't know left from right when it came to the temple's culture. That would be a problem, a huge problem. I had to tell the high priest something, but lies would get me nowhere. I didn't have a good memory like him. If I tried telling lies, I would forget what I had said before the week was up. A hole would immediately form my web of falsehoods I tried spinning. I had to trick him without telling my lies. I've been asked a similar question in the past about my recipes. They asked me how I learned them, and how did you answer? With the high priest leveling his sharp gaze at me, I answered, within a dream. I told them I learned the recipes in a dreamlike place to which I can never return. Would you believe me if I gave you the same answer? I didn't know how the high priest would react to this, but I had no better answer to give. I kept looking into his eyes and clenched my fist, mouth, tight sh mouth shut tightly. I answered his questions and I didn't lie. My body felt hot as sweat dripped to my back, but I felt a chill in the air as we glared at each other without pause. I honestly didn't know how long we sat there in silence. Eventually, the high priest spoke with a sigh. I cannot say either way. His brows were still furrowed, but it seemed like his gaze was a little less sharp than before. I had expected his eyes to sharpen further and for him to say something like quit messing around or give a real answer. If that happened, I, wouldn't have, I would have doubled down and told him I hadn't lied, but I didn't have any answers prepared for the direction he took it to instead. Although it sounds comically unrealistic, it would explain many of the mysteries surrounding you. My prediction that you were educated elsewhere would be proven correct as well, not to mention you are hideously poor at lying, and your thoughts are always written on your face. No noble in the world would find themselves tricked by you or unable to read your emotions. Mm. I pressed on my cheeks so he wouldn't be able to read any more of my emotions and began tapping a finger against his temples. But that is exactly why this is so troubling. I will need a time to think on this matter. You may leave for now. He returned the paper I had given him, and I left the secret room alone. I felt the daggers of his gaze on my back along the way. Uh-oh, he's getting suspicious! The next day I stayed, and he actually grasped it completely without even realizing he did. The next day I stayed home from the temple and went shopping with Benno and the others to get the tools I needed for woodblock printing. This was something I had to do. I wasn't just avoiding the temple since it would be awkward seeing the high priest there. Absolutely not. So what the hell do you need to buy anyway? I would like paintbrushes and rollers to paint the wood out. Or paint the woodcut. Huh? What's that second one? Lutz and Benno blinked in confusion. I tried explaining what a roller was using as simple terms as possible. Um, you take it. Do they not have rolling pins? Maybe not, I guess. Um, you take a tube like cylinder and put a handle on it so you can, like, roll it around. Yeah, I'm not following. They both sighed heavily, neither of them understanding my explanation at all. If Lutz didn't know it despite his exposure to construction tools, they probably didn't exist at all in the city. Alright, anyway, let's try checking out a store. Benno took me to the art supply store that the art workshop had told him about. They apparently sold mortars in the shape of boards and pestles there. I looked to see if they had paintbrushes or rollers, but not even the storekeeper understood when I tried to explain what a roller was. They had wide paintbrushes, but unfortunately no rollers. Well, that's that. What are you going to do with that roller thing, mine? I'll see what I can do with paintbrushes. If these don't work, I'll just have to order a roller in the smithy. Don't know if they'll understand what you're talking about, though. Benno snorted at a laugh, but I was sure Johan would understand my explanation if I gave precise measurements with corresponding drawings. I believed in him. I returned home with Lutz after finishing shopping. The cool autumn breeze blew over us as we talked, walked with, well, with held hands. I can't wait for tomorrow, he said, as he casually walked home without a care in the world. I didn't mention it earlier so you wouldn't go berserk before we went shopping, but my brothers have finished that woodcut you wanted. I'll bring it to you once we get back. Yay! Once we got home, I waited in my room, brimming with excitement, until Lutz brought the, brought the card woodcut to me. He handed it over, and I could tell from a quick look that there were more than a few messed up parts. By the way, mine, they wanted to tell you that it was a real pain in the neck getting this done. There's too many tiny details. I can kind of tell that just by looking at it. Lutz paused, passed on the message with clear reluctance. There were multiple parts where the cuts were too deep or the lines too disjointed, probably from them cutting with too much force at times and letting momentum get the best of them. It didn't help that they weren't used to cutting, carving at woodcuts, so Wilma's art being so detailed was definitely a factor here. If employees of a carpentry workshop like Ralph and Sieg didn't like doing this, I can imagine it wouldn't be easy to make woodcuts for a book's worth of pages. Maybe I'll ask Ingo's workshop to do the carvings if this woodcut looks like I want, works like I want it to. Yeah, getting work done officially through a workshop would be smart. This works too hard for a side job. Let's not at my suggestion, but I still felt sad. Hiring Ingo meant the base cost of making the book would be significantly higher. So how are you going to use the brush? Les's thoughts had already ventured toward the printing. He took the brush we brought out of the bag and fiddled with its bristles. I grabbed the bear that I made earlier and brought over some pieces of paper to explain how woodblock printing works. First, we spread out the scrap paper, 
and put the wood cut on top of it. Then we cover it with ink. We'll want to use the tip of the brush to rub the ink in and make sure it's spread evenly. I gave Will's instructions while rubbing the base paint, the bare paintbrush against the woodcut. He watched carefully while noting down the instructions on the diptych. This is where we would want a roller. It would spread the ink equally just by rolling round on top of it. But there's no use crying over what we don't have. Once the ink spread, put the paper on top, put a layer of scrap paper on top of that, and then rub the baron all over it while pressing down to get the ink on the paper. Oh, I know what they're talking about. They're talking about that round thingy they used to brush on top of the paper. That in the anime, that's what they're talking about. I was wondering where the Baron was. Keep the force steady and don't go extra hard or gentle anywhere. I rolled my homemade Baron over the paper in a circular fashion, and Lutz murmured in surprise about how that weird thing he saw me making was actually useful for something. Then you gently peel the paper off and wait for it to dry. Done. Alright, I get how it works now. You're going to try it out tomorrow, right? I went to the temple with trepidation, but the high priest didn't say anything in particular when we saw each other. He just expressionlessly listed out his normal instructions as if nothing had happened. It was a huge relief when I managed to finish my work without him saying anything else. Okay, that's the biggest hurdle cleared. Onward to the woodcut. Now then, if you would excuse me, I left the high priest's room with my heart full of song and my mind full of woodbrock printing. The high priest was staring daggers into my back, but let's not think about that right now. Sister Mine, you see, ex seem exceptionally pleased, noted Fran. Of course, I replied, already humming a little bit. I finished helping the high priest, and now I can make picture books in the workshop. By the time lunch was over and I was on my way to the mine workshop, I was so excited it was probably unhealthy for me. I have arrived. Let us begin printing at once. Now, Lutz, I believe you know what to do. When I arrived at the workshop, Lutz had more or less finished preparing for the printing. Scrap paper was spread out on top of a table, and the woodcut on top of that. Curious children were surrounding the table. Sister mine, what are we doing here? <laughs> You'll see soon. I headed to the table, and the crowded children parted to form a viewing spot for me. There I stood while Lutz did his work. He put the ink on the brush, painted the carved part of the wood block, woodcut block, which made the kids cry out in excitement. Wow, it's all black. I can't see the picture anymore. Lutz raised an eyebrow at their excitement, but continued his already steady work without pause. He gently placed a piece of volrum paper on the ink-slathered wood cut and rubbed the baron against it just like I had demonstrated yesterday. Wow, that looks like fun. I want to try it. Me too, me too. Let's set the Baron aside, took off the scraps, and picked up the corner of the paper. As everyone watched with excitement, he gently peeled the paper off. The ink was stuck to the lightly rolled paper just as I thought it would be, forming a successful woodblock print. Wow, it's a picture! The block was all black, but there's white lines on the picture. The kids beamed smiles and chatted with excitement over how a pitch black block made detailed art on paper. After instructing them to return to switching, switching Pope and Saketas, I looked at the printed paper picture with Lutz. How was it mine? Not perfect. Despite how excited I was to have printed a picture, I felt conflicted. It definitely had more artistic depth to it than the woodcut I made in art class back in elementary school, though. Asking Lutz's brothers to make it instead of trying to do it myself had been the right call. It's fine as a woodblock print, but I don't think this is good enough for a picture book. Yeah, the lines aren't impossible to read or anything, but white letters on black aren't the best, I think. It did kind of hurt to read the white letters on black text. And I had messed up the mirrored writing at points. That was my fault. But since the woodcut had both the art and the text on it, we'd need to make a new one from scratch to finish it. Not to mention that the art was so dark, it was actually kind of scary on top of all the mistakes. Let's his brothers not being used to, car used to carving detailed art didn't help. But regardless, it would be hard to sell a picture book with art of this quality. Maybe I should use a stamp for the letters. Like, have a stamp made with all the text on it? Making the woodcuts already too much work to be work worth the time. The stamp with all the le text on it is just out of the question. It'd be way harder to carve around the letters to make them stand out than to just carve out the letters themselves. That's true. I might need to rethink this. Woodblock printing itself might not be good for picture books. The art being so filled with black is kind of scary, too. I put the printed paper on top of a shelf and let's start cleaning up. There was no point in printing more when they would all end up just as flawed. Mmm, I think copper plate etching would be better for printing one with art, but I didn't think I'd have an easy time getting corrosive agents like nitric acid to start copper plate etching, and finding alternatives of my own would probably be a huge hassle. Not to mention that I didn't want anything that dangerous used in the workshop where little kids hung around. But what to do then? At this point, failing didn't depress me that much, but in this case, I had failed after getting Wilma to draw the art, and lets his brothers to carve the woodcut. It would be hard to tell them that it didn't work out and to ask for their help in the future without any guarantee that I would succeed. What's on your mind? Let's finish cleaning up and came back. I'm thinking that maybe I should just give up on adding art to the kid's Bible. It'll still be a book if it has words on it, so... 
Does it make a difference to me, but uh, can you call it a picture book if it doesn't have pictures? No, it would just be a normal book, not a picture book. Weren't you all pumped to get your first picture book to your little brother or sister? Something about it being your first gift to them as your older sister? Oh, that's right. You're right. I can't compromise here. I need to make an amazing picture book no matter what. I can't give up over a single failure or two. I need to move on from woodblock printing and think of something new. Okay. <sighs> I'll see you guys next time.